So what she's going to do is put it onto the four square so that they can do their writing. And then she just kind of models how they're putting it, where they're putting their pieces. So I'm going to move it into where she's given them some feedback about when they start working. What is it? It's the best job that I've ever done. Hold on. I wrote it down. There we go. So this is for you. It's the best thing. Why? What is it? It's so this is when the students are actually it? participating it's in the work. It's the best job ever. Where? Mm. In the United States. And then watch what and she's like, doing. To punish him? No. So I agree with you guys. I said I I've sent you to the best dog training academy in the United States, and I know it will make you such a better dog. So now, she's. Now, point of view is that from again? Okay. Now, second comment. Other dogs are very, very bad. This was mostly like, okay, so it was her explanation. It was her beginning of her lesson, and then it was the I do part. So just thinking of the whole lesson holistically. Now, when we come in on T-Test, we don't do a holistic grading. We look at piece by piece by piece. We go through the whole rubric, and we look at all of the pieces. But if we were thinking of this in a holistic idea, what would you guys think? Would you think she was uh, above proficient? So uh, above proficient, we have the um, distinguished and all of those. And, or was she proficient or was she below proficient? What would you guys think? And you can I would say she was above. Because okay. she challenged them for a higher level of thinking. Everybody had a different job to do. They they knew their role when they put on their name tags or put on their a different hat. And they taught them to look at stuff from not just their perspective, but actually go into the story and become that character. Okay. And they had go ahead. They had procedures. So they knew Okay. You know, that they were used to the hats, they were used to the prompts. She'd ask them about, you know, like remember last week in our heart to heart, so she was pulling stuff back and forth from other lessons they were making those connections. Okay, what would you think? I would say either above proficient or proficient because everybody was in tune, engaged with the lesson plan and knew what to do. I should say enough, everybody had their roles and everyone understood what to do. So. Okay, good. What about you, Ms. Frazier? Well, I was just thinking she was above because everybody, I just like to say everybody had a role and they knew what to do. All right, Ms. Williams? Uh, I say above because she would. I like the hands-on teaching, okay. like and the modeling. Now not I'm gonna just give you script. some pushback, Mr. Long, and then I'm gonna tell you at the end what it was. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some pushback on the on on what you said. You said about the um, questioning. Mm -hmm. What kind of questioning did she use that was higher level thinking? Do you think? And uh, you guys can chime in as much as you want as well. The questions. Um, it was just <clears throat> like. When she was saying uh, about Miss LaRue, what would Miss LaRue say? Even the students said something that they thought. So it, it just made them rethink and not become, not think of my thoughts, but actually think in the story. So become more character based in the story. So okay. I, thought, I just thought that that changes your thinking pattern, your, your way, your whole thought process of the story. All right, so did you guys notice when she was responding to what they were talking about, about the story with Miss LaRue, what was she doing when they would respond? She was giving a, like a student affirmation, so those claps and mm -hmm. okay. clam claps and stuff. Yeah. Appraising everybody's response. Everybody feedback. got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Giving that feedback to back what they said or what they were answering about. Okay, so she did give them some feedback. They did get the clam claps and all of that when they were presenting, kind of. And so I'm focused a little bit more like right at the end here. Mm -hmm. um, when the kid would say something like when she asked them, why were they at the dog academy? What happened when, when the student responded about the dog academy? She restated it, what they said. And sometimes she changed what they said to kind of guide into the right answer. Mm -hmm. So she affirmed that they were on the right track, but she kind of still turned them the right direction so they didn't yeah. all go down the wrong way. Right. Mm -hmm. So they don't get stuck in the rabbit hole and go in the right in the wrong direction. She's guiding them. But as she did this, and she did it pretty much throughout the whole piece of the lesson that we saw, when the students are responding, she is like like you said, she's guiding, but she really is restating it in a whole like in the, what she wants to hear. So she was taken. So she did say when they were 
you know, the students, like when she's asking about, was it a bad dog? And then the student says, well, because they're, no, they're good because they're at the academy. And then, and then she says, yeah, so what about the academy? And she guides, like she changes pretty much the answer that the kids said. Mm -hmm. So that was something that, that we would be looking at because um, that was an open opportunity for her to say, okay, somebody help them out. Somebody, you know, like guide other students. Because if you notice, who was doing most of the work in this lesson? She definitely was. The kids were quiet. Yeah. The kids did know their roles and procedures. So in her roles and procedures, her routines, all of those things yeah. were spot on. But when we're looking at the instruction, the delivery of the instruction, and remember I said, teacher does, teacher says, student does, student says. What did we see the students mostly doing? Sitting. Sitting. Yeah. We watched 20 minutes of the students. Four students had an opportunity to stand up and share. They did have a brief moment to kind of come together and practice a little bit. Um, and then they, they got to share out a little bit with their groups or discuss in their groups and things like that. So it's really, really important. And I didn't bring the, because I got caught up with the other student, um, and I had a rubric for you guys to look at. Because at the bottom of our rubric, um, it says, it has an arrow that points to the higher levels of our T-test rubric, and it says, um, student, student directed. So the more that the students are engaged, and they were engaged, they were sitting, they were, but we would call this more than engagement, we would call it like um, quiet compliance. They're compliant students. And then I told you guys to look and see who was in the room. Did y'all notice who was in the room? Is there another teacher in the back? Mm -hmm. There is another teacher in the back, and that's probably her appraiser. Yeah, that's probably her appraiser because she's got a computer out and you can see her kind of like looking around and then jotting stuff down. Um, so I, I take paper and pencil and write. It's just easier for me, but some people take in their computers and so she's probably being appraised. Um, when we did this with the other groups, they uh, said, yeah, she's absolutely getting appraised. She's got her hair done and rotors and all of that. <laughs> she's like really, really prepared for this lesson. And, and that happens because, you know, you have your lesson when you come in. We have our pre-conference. We have our observation. We have our post-conference. So you have a chance to be prepared. As you prepare, think about how you can keep your students engaged. Them doing, them doing, mostly them doing. You, you don't want to end up tired at the end because you did all the work. You want the kids to be real tired when they get. It makes you wonder how many, what day in the cycle of the lesson this is. Because she kept going back to things they had done in the past and they read it all week. Right. This must be at least Wednesday or Thursday. Yes, they and so really it, they knew the story. Right, yeah. they knew the story. And their routines and procedures, and I don't know if y'all can see it from where you guys are. It tells you right here the time of year that it is. September, right? November. Okay. The November. Best month. So, <laughs> uh -uh, I'm going to have to just read it September. Uh, but it's November, <laughs> so they've had time to build the routines and procedures. And you see, and like, that absolutely was great. Like, she has, those things are very much in place. The instruction that we're looking for, that was the place that was um, a little bit more teacher than it was student. So we want it to be more student-led. And, and it doesn't mean the kids have to always, always constantly be doing everything, but you do want to give them a little bit more time. And you want them to have that time to build their own thoughts and not, oh yeah, well you kind of said this, but this is what it is. You know, because that's what she did. And then she'd be like, yeah, well there was this, right? Is the kid gonna say no? No, it's not that you know. Is you know truly true? Even a fourth grader, yeah. there might be one that's a little more rambunctious and confident and gonna you know really be like no, yeah, actually it's this. But for the you know for the majority, you're gonna say right, and well of course the teacher's right, so they're gonna agree. They're not gonna give you a different. So what do y'all think her rating actually? <laughs> Bad. It was not bad. You know, she was, at she was at, because of all of the things, once you look at all of the things together, the thing that would have um, kind of dropped her a little bit was the instructional delivery and the student engagement and the student work. Um, the other pieces would have gotten her high. high she approached her. proficiency. She, she, she <laughs> approached, approached it. She, she was past approaching it. She was actually proficient. <laughs> She's a solid proficient teacher that um, with all of her things, you know, and then you, what we look at real, real hard though is the instructional part. So that's, that's where you have to, you have to be planned and prepared, have everything ready, and then really deliver that instruction where the kids have a chance to interact and the kids have a chance to voice their thoughts and, and create thoughts, like create deeper thinking. 
Okay, does that surprise you that it was a three? And then as you watch further, because it's a 45 minute lesson, so as you watch further in the lesson, she continues to do those same things. They break out into groups and they do a whole, like they do their perspective from the lesson from Mr. LaRue or Mrs. LaRue. And uh, as they're working in their groups, she continues to come and, and then they start, that's when the behavior starts, when they're working in their groups and she has to keep coming and redirecting students. Um, but as she comes and redirects and talks to the groups individually, she keeps doing that same, oh no, but, oh, you're thinking this? No, but it's really, and keeps doing that where she's giving them the thought that they need to have and not letting them create their own thought. And so it is a progression. Okie doke. Any questions? Um, you guys are going to be looking at the instructional rubric. I think Ms. Fry and Mr. Edmund will bring you a, a print out of their rubric, and uh, that's what y'all have from today's plan or from today's lesson for PLC. But it's really just looking and really focusing, and, and they're focusing as well, the instructional part, and then the prepared, uh, prepared lessons, instruction, and then routines and procedures. So is this a true PLC day, like where the classes will be combined and everything, or is it like last week where they were by grade level? Our PLCs are by grade level now. That's a district initiative. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's always going to be by grade level. Okay, so we're not doing the combined no, the combining math and all that. And, you know. Oh, okay. Well, and which is really, really, like, we yeah. really are sad about that because yeah. as yeah. groups, like, they need the learning needs to be vertical. I so said vertical can, alignment yeah. part, I understand. Yeah, they really yeah. need it that way, but right. uh, the district... Uh, said that we need to go ahead and do it by grade level, oh, which made it easier for everyone. It's easier really. for us, especially. Yeah, well, and it, and it's easier for the grade level as well because yeah. they're, they're always on the same day. They right, always get, so right. it's easier for everyone. Right. And I understand the. I understand the logistics. Yeah, the logistic wonder. parts of it is what. what but they okay, they so want everybody doing it at the same like it's a camp gotcha. like district wide. Everyone does PLC by grade level now. Okay. 